Black is a... Here we go, Mighty Companions, Earl Purdy. We're going to get down with Hardcore Course in Miracles. Welcome to Hardcore Course in Miracles. I'm Earl Purdy. Welcome to Hardcore Course in Miracles. and miracles I'm Earl Purdy. If the words I hear they keep coming through from deep inside of me and you it's telling us that love is who I am you and me were not that far apart yeah we I'm Earl Raj Purdy. This is especially aimed at Course in Miracles students who are actually studying a Course in Miracles, even though anybody's welcome to watch it. But I'm calling it hardcore because we don't analyze it. I don't analyze it. I don't analyze it. I don't analyze it. The emphasis is on hearing it and remembering what it's saying. I call myself the divine repetition teacher, the divine remembrance teacher. So my goal is for us to actually hear what the heck A Course in Miracles is saying. Guess what? Hello, mighty companions. Tell me, can you feel it? Put your arms around it. Know that we are one. We are one. Oh, oh, oh we are one. We are one. Yeah, yeah, we are one. We are one. Oh, oh we are one. Guess what? Ah, 
that was Brother John Christmas at johnchristmas.com. And in case you want to get his music, that's John Christmas at johnchristmas.com. Welcome to Hardcore Course in Miracles. I'm the Divine Repetition Teacher, the DRT, as I call myself. And I'm here after 40 years of teaching and learning A Course in Miracles. It blows my mind. It's the best thing that I've ever learned. It produces so many miracles in my life that it really, really, really is mind-boggling. We're going to be in the teacher's manual. We're going to be in the manual for teachers in uh, the foundation for inner peace version of A Course in Miracles. We're going to be on page 16, page 16 in the manual for teachers. We're going to be on the section called open-mindedness. Open-mindedness. The one thing that we are just full of is open-mindedness. Page 16, Manual for Teachers, Open-Mindedness. We're going to do open-mindedness, and we're going to also get started on... Um, <clears throat> so we're going to do open-mindedness, and we're going to get that down, like what exactly is open-mindedness. That's what we're going to get clear tonight, because we hear that term, open-mindedness. I am so glad that you are here, Mighty Companion, and I want you to make sure that you share the video, and I'm glad that we are able to come together as our spiritual family so that we can support each other in our study of the Course in Miracles. And so I'm going to, and remember the Course in Miracles says you need not believe the ideas, you need not accept the ideas, you need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas may be hard to believe, it says some of the ideas may be quite startling. It says you're not being asked to judge, which is to analyze the ideas at all. It's saying if you use the ideas, you will see that the ideas are true. If you use the ideas, didn't say, no, it's nowhere in the book that it says if you analyze the ideas, you're going to realize the ideas are true. The Course in Miracles is only talking about love or fear. It's teaching us how to remove the blocks to the awareness of love, the awareness of joy. The awareness of God. That's what it's about. It's a spiritual teaching. It's a spiritual teaching. It's a spiritual teaching. It's not a regular self-help book. It's a spiritual teaching. It's about allowing us to get in touch with and be able to hear the voice for God, the voice for love inside of us. So that's what the Course in Miracles is talking about. So we're going to start out with open-mindedness. I'm going to read the paragraph all the way through and then I'm going to go back through it line by line, and then we're going to see what it's saying, and then we're going to go through it that way. So here we go. It says, The centrality of open-mindedness, perhaps the last of the attributes the teacher of God acquires, is easily understood when its relationship to forgiveness is recognized. Open-mindedness comes with lack of judgment. As judgment shuts the mind against God's teacher, so open-mindedness invites God's teacher to come in. As condemnation judges the child of God as evil, so open-mindedness permits the Son of God to be judged by the voice for God on his behalf. As the projection of guilt upon the child of God would send the child of God to hell, so open-mindedness lets Christ's image be extended to the child of God. Only the open-minded can be at peace, for only the open-minded alone see a reason for peace. Okay, so let's go back. It's so good to see you. God, it's so good to feel you. It's so good to be here with you. It's a spiritual teaching. It's not a self-help book. It's not the regular self-help book. You know, The Course in Miracles is not about how you can be in charge of the process. So it says that one of the things that's interesting in that very first sentence is that it says the centrality of open-mindedness, perhaps the last of the attributes that the teacher of God acquires. So the Course in Miracles is saying the last attribute that a demonstrator of love acquires is open-mindedness. It's like the last thing, the last thing that a person really starts to practice is open-mindedness. And he says, you're going to be open-minded when you understand the relationship between being a forgiving person and an open-minded person. The Course in Miracles has its own definitions. The Course in Miracles has its own definitions of the terms. So forgiveness, one of the definitions of forgiveness is correct perception 
true perception. The Course in Miracles defines forgiveness as true perception, as correct perception. It even says that forgiveness is a, a, the miracle, that a miracle is another a miracle is another name for forgiveness. Because if we forgive each other, it's a friggin' miracle. So when the Course in Miracles says forgiveness, it's talking about what? Correct perception. So open-mindedness comes from a lack of judgment. So you're not really you're not really open-minded if you're full of judgment. Because if you're full of judgment, then you're full of your opinions, your interpretations, the meanings that you're giving to things. So a person that has judged, which means they already think they know what's going on, that's not open-minded. So being open-minded goes with being forgiving. And being forgiving means that you are correctly perceiving, that you are truly perceiving. Many times in the Course, it describes forgiveness as true perception, correct perception. What is forgiveness? Correct perception. Then the Course says the way that you can tell if you have incorrect perception is that correct perception gives you some form of peace. That correct perception takes you in the direction of peace. I am not one of these Course in Miracles teachers who's trying to make the Course in Miracles sound completely complicated. Um, the Course in Miracles is not complicated. The Course in Miracles is saying, I'm here to give you a new interpretation, a new perception of things, because if you have a correct perception, if you have a loving perception, it's going to give you peace. And if you have peace, you can hear the voice for God inside of you. The Course in Miracles says, if you are full of conflict, you cannot hear the voice of God. You cannot hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You cannot hear the voice of truth. So if you're going to be open-minded, then you've got to stop judging everything. Because the Course in Miracles says what? It says judgment shuts your mind against God's teacher. Judgment shuts your mind against the truth. It shuts your mind against the Holy Spirit. It shuts your mind against the voice for love. And then it says, don't you know that if you're open-minded, then it's going to invite the Holy Spirit to come in. It's going to invite the voice for love to come in. I'm Earl Purdy, and I'm here to share A Course in Miracles. And it's been something I've committed and dedicated my life to. And I've been a full-time teacher and student of the Course in Miracles for over 30 years. So I'm very familiar with the, inter with, the, with the material, but it doesn't mean the way that it comes through me is the only way to see things. I'm never saying that the, my interpretation of the Course in Miracles is the only interpretation and the only way to look at it. But if you will notice, everything I'm saying to you is on the page. Open-mindedness comes from what? Lack of judgment. So what does judgment do? It shuts your mind against love. Judgment shuts your mind against love. So what does open-mindedness do? Open-mindedness invites love to come in because God is love. The Holy Spirit is love. Do you know that the Course in Miracles is only talking about love or fear? Then it goes on to say that open-mindedness permits you to be judged by the voice for God. And open-mindedness permits you to be judged, but not by the regular people but it allows you to be judged by God's voice. Hello, Alita. Hello, CJ. It's glad to see all of you online. Uh, I appreciate you being here. You are my mighty companions, all of you, Alita, all of you, and everybody that's online. I want you to know how much I appreciate all of these wonderful, incredible brothers and sisters. With the course, When the course says brothers, it's just talking about the minds that are joined with us. The Course in Miracles says that a brother is just an equal. Don't let yourself get hung up on the Christian terminology on the Course to the point that it keeps you from hearing the content of the Course. So, it's, so it says, open-mindedness permits the child of God to be judged by the voice for God on his behalf. So the Course in Miracles says what sends us to hell, which the Course in Miracles defines as fear. It says fear is hell. So whenever you hear the term hell, it's just talking about fear. And it says, as the projection of guilt upon the child of God would send the child of God to hell, which is fear, 
so open-mindedness lets Christ's image, which is love, be extended to the child of God. So what happens when you're open-minded? Then love is extended. What happens when you are judging and you are not open-minded? That means you are projecting guilt, and projecting guilt would send you to fear, which is hell. Because remember, we're only talking about what? Love or fear. Did you hear me, Julia? Did you hear me, Kim? We're only talking about love or fear. <clears throat> so it's only the open-minded that can be at peace because it's only the open-minded that see reason for peace. So it's only somebody that's open-minded that sees a reason to be peaceful. And it's a closed-minded person that's full of conflict and fear. So how can I tell when I'm being closed to the voice for God, I am not at peace? How can I tell when I'm not seeing correctly because I'm not at peace? How can I tell when I'm not seeing correctly? I feel guilty. And, I, and the Course says that guilt and anger are the same thing. So the projection of guilt sends a person into, into fear and hell and open-mindedness lets love be extended to you. It's only the open-minded who can even be at peace because it's only the open-minded that can see a reason for peace. So did you see how we focused in on the paragraph? Did you notice that I focused in on the paragraph, that I was not analyzing the Course in Miracles? Because there was nothing in that paragraph that called for you to analyze it. If you're going to be open-minded, the Course says that you, need to, you, that you need to be a forgiving person. And a forgiving person is someone who's seeing things correctly. If you're seeing things correctly, which is forgiveness, then you are open-minded and you have peace. So how do you become an open-minded person? Then you have to stop judging. You have to stop judging. Unless you're going to use the Holy Spirit's judgment, unless you're going to use love's judgment, and the Course says the Holy Spirit's judgment is that everything is either love or a call for love. So if you're going to use judgment at all, it needs to be the Holy Spirit's judgment. And the Holy Spirit's judgment Love's judgment is everything that's going on in the world right now is either love or it's a call for love. Everything that's going on in the world right now, everything that's going on in your life right now is either love or a call for love. That's the only thing that you are experiencing. Either you're experiencing love right now or you're experiencing a call for love. You're either seeing love right now or you're seeing a call for love. That is the Holy Spirit's judgment according to A Course in Miracles. Open-mindedness comes with lack of your judgment. So what would the ego's judgment be? The ego's judgment is anything other than what you see is either love or call for love. If I say that anything that's going on is, is anything other than love or call for love, then I'm not using the Holy Spirit's judgment. I am not using God's judgment according to the Course. Now I'm talking about according to the Course. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say that after every sentence but I'm talking about according to the Course because that's what's on the page. So, <clears throat> so the main thing to realize is that if you are condemning someone, then the Course in Miracles says, then you're judging them as evil. So if I'm condemning someone and I'm saying that they're doing anything other than expressing love or call for love, then I am condemning them and I'm judging them as evil. But if I'm going to be open-minded, then that's going to permit that person and even myself to be, judged, to be judged by the voice for God, which is the voice for love, which is the voice for truth on that person's behalf. <sighs> Projecting guilt upon a person would send that person to fear, which is hell. But when I'm open-minded, do you know that it's going to let love be extended to that person? Only the open-minded can be at peace. Why? Because it's only the open-minded that can see a reason for peace. Okay. All right. All right. So focus in. You want to focus in on what's being said. Focus in on what's being said. Make sure that you're allowing yourself to hear what's being said. Okay. How do the open-minded forgive? If you're going to be an open-minded person, 
then you got to be a forgiving person. Well, how do you forgive? How do you have true perception in a situation that you might be in right now that you need to forgive? Let's go through the next paragraph. It says, how do the open-minded forgive? Well, the open-minded have let go of all things that would prevent forgiveness. The open-minded have in truth abandoned the world and let the world be restored to them in newness and in joy so glorious that the open-minded can never have conceived of such a change. If you have truly forgiven and you have truly let the world be restored to you in newness, it goes like this. It goes like this. Listen, 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 listen. How do the open-minded forgive? How do the open-minded forgive? The open-minded have let go all things that could prevent forgiveness. The open-minded have in truth abandoned the world and let the world be restored to them in newness and in joy so glorious they could never have conceived of such a change. Nothing is now as it was formerly. Nothing but sparkles now which seemed so dull and lifeless before. Nothing but sparkles now which seemed so dull and lifeless before. And above all are all things welcoming for threat is gone. No clouds remain to hide the face of Christ. No, no, no clouds remain to hide the face of Christ. Now is the goal achieved. Now is the goal achieved. What is the goal? Forgiveness is the final goal of the curriculum. Forgiveness is the final goal of the curriculum. Forgiveness paves the way for what goes be. Forgiveness paves the way for what goes far beyond all learning. The curriculum makes no effort to exceed the curriculum's legitimate goal. Forgiveness is the curriculum's single aim. Forgiveness is the curriculum's single aim at which all learning ultimately converges Forgiveness is indeed enough. Forgiveness is indeed enough. Correct perception is indeed enough. Do you hear me? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Do you hear me? Okay. All right. So let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. So how did the open mind forgive? Well, if you really want to be a forgiving person, if you really want to see things correctly, if you really want to see things correctly, if you really want to see things correctly, which is forgiveness, what do you do? If you really want to forgive, if you really want to have true perception, what do you do? Listen to me. If you want to forgive, if you want to forgive, if you want to forgive, you have to let go of everything that prevents you from forgiving. If you're going to be a forgiving person, you have to let go, let go, let go, let go of every thought that's not true that keeps you from being forgiving, which is whatever it is that keeps you from having true perception. So if you are a forgiving person, do you know that the Course in Miracles says that if you really become a forgiving person, you are going to abandon the world. That simply means you're going to stop looking at things through false perception. It just means you're going to abandon the world's ideas of separation and judgment and guilt and fear. So if you're going to truly be forgiving, if you're going to see things correctly, you got to stop thinking the way that the world thinks. You can't think the way that the world thinks, which is based on separation and fear. And so when you abandon the world, it means you're going to let your world be restored to you. So when you forgive, when you let go of everything that would prevent forgiveness, the Course says what's going to happen is you're going to let the world be restored to you in newness and in joy. You're going to let the world be restored to you in newness and in joy. And it's going to be a joy that's so glorious that you could have never even conceived of such a change. So when you really abandon the ego, 
when you really let go of anger, guilt, separation, then you are going to let the world be restored to you. And then it's going to be restored to you in newness and it's going to be restored to you in joy. So how do you know when you've abandoned the world? You feel brand new and you have so much joy that you could not have even conceived of such a change. It's more joy than you could have ever conceived of. So what does that look like? What does it look like when you have really, really, really abandoned the ego? When you really abandon the world? Nothing is now as it was before. It says nothing is now as it was before. Everything sparkles that looked like it was dull and lifeless before. The Course in Miracles is telling you how you can tell if you truly forgiven, if you truly see incorrectly, if you no longer believe in, in anger, guilt, and grievances and separation. If you abandon the world, everything is new. You have a joy that's so great that you could not have even conceived of such a change. Nothing is the way that it used to be. Everything sparkles. And then it says, and above all, 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 and above all, are all things welcoming for a threat is gone. So if you really have an open mind and you've let go of everything that prevents you from being loving, everything is going to welcome you and there won't be any threat. I love the Courts of Miracles because it keeps me from fooling myself. It keeps me from deceiving myself and telling myself that I've reached a level of forgiveness that I haven't reached yet. Because if I'm truly forgiven, if I'm truly open-minded, if I have not been projecting guilt, the Course in Miracles says, nothing will be the way that it was before. Everything will be sparkling. It says that everything will be welcoming me. And most of all, it says when you're really perceiving correctly and you're really listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit and you let yourself be led by love, there is no threat. So if I feel threatened, if I see threat, if I see threat, then it means that I have not forgiven yet. I'm not seeing things completely correctly yet. But I should be grateful for every little bit of progress that I make. Readiness is not mastery. Just because I'm ready to become a, to become a more open-minded, forgiving person, it doesn't mean that I have reached total forgiveness yet. But by us coming together, reading this, studying this, applying it to our experience, it means that we are moving in the direction that is correct. So I want you to take a breath. I love music and I'm gonna use music in my presentation. That's just the way it is. So sometimes people have a problem with that. <laughs> and I'd say, well, I'm not your teacher. I'm not the one you're supposed to be listening to. <laughs> That's all that means. <laughs> and remember that, whatever your path, whatever your inspiration is, whatever is moving you that you feel like is your calling, don't change it because somebody else doesn't approve of it. The, one of the main things that keeps people from having happiness in this life is being concerned about what other people think and other people's opinions. If you feel inspired, the Course in Miracles says, if you feel inspired, you're in spirit. Music inspires me, joy inspires me, you inspire me. So if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it the way that I'm inspired to do it, and that's what you should do. Because that allows your world to be sparkling with newness and joy. It allows you to have a world that you don't have any threat in. The Course says, no clouds remain to hide the face of Christ. And the Course in Miracles says, the Christ is your real self, your true self. 
So when I go through the Course in Miracles, a lot of times I substitute the true self whenever I see the word Christ, because the Course says Christ is the true self, the loving self. And then it says at that point that there is no threat and everything is new and you're seeing things correctly, you're at peace. He says, now is the goal achieved. And what is the goal? What is the goal? What is the goal? Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> what is the goal? He says, forgiveness. Forgiveness is the final goal of A Course in Miracles. So why are you studying The Course in Miracles? Because your goal should be forgiveness. What is forgiveness? True perception, correct perception, a loving perception, an expression of love. So your goal is to be someone that's expressing and extending love. Your goal for being here is to learn how to see things correctly. And when you're seeing things correctly, what happens? You are peaceful. You've abandoned the world. Everything seems new and beautiful and sparkling. And there's nothing to hide the face of love at that point. There's nothing to hide your true self at that point. So what is the goal of the curriculum? The goal of, of the curriculum, <laughs> that's right, the, that's what's so funny. Do y'all know that people do that? They're like trying to tell me how to teach my class. And if it's something that I do that they don't like, then I'm supposed to change it. That's, that, that's so funny because the Course of Miracles teaches that you're never upset for the reason you think. So they're not really upset for the reason they think anyway. It doesn't have anything to do with that. And it doesn't happen often, don't get me wrong. I think I've been like really fortunate because... You know, I've had over a million views on YouTube, a million of my videos, and I haven't had 20 attacks. And that's a heck of a percentage. And even if it is, what am I supposed to do if I'm open-minded? I'm supposed to see it as a call for love. I'm supposed to see it as a love or a call for love. And that's the way I see it. So don't get me wrong. I wish everybody, regardless of how they see me, I wish them peace. I wish them joy. Because if they were really happy, then they would be trying to judge anyway, right? Right? Okay. So let me tell you something. The Course in Miracles gets easier. Your life gets easier and easier and easier in your perception if you're applying the principles of the Course in Miracles. If you're not beginning to feel more peace, then there's something wrong with your interpretation of the Course in Miracles that you have, you're still judging at some level. So I just want to tell you that the hardest part, the Course says, is the beginning. So getting started is the hardest part. So forgiveness is the final curriculum goal. Because when you forgive, when you have true perception, it paves the way for what goes far beyond all learning. And do you know that that was one of the other things that really attracted me to the Course in Miracles 40 years ago this year? Uh, was that it kept saying there was an end to learning. And I was actually glad. Because I would always read in other truth books that you're going to be learning forever. You're just going to be learning forever. And I was like, well, I don't want to learn forever. That doesn't sound exciting to me to learn forever. I don't mind learning, but I don't want to learn forever. I want to be what the Course in Miracles said that we are, which is I want to be a creator. I want to extend love. I want to be a part of the, the creation of something new. So he says, well, you can't be a creator until you have correct perception. And correct perception is forgiveness. So when you say forgiveness is the final goal of the curriculum, that's the same as saying correct perception is the final goal of the curriculum. And correct perception paves the way for what goes beyond all learning. So this curriculum of the Course in Miracles is to teach you how to forgive, which is to have correct perception. And so it says the curriculum makes no effort to exceed its legitimate goal. The course is only about, its main goal is to correct your perception, which is to correct your interpretation of things. The course is trying to help us have the correct perception. So forgiveness is the single aim of the course. When you learn how to forgive, when you learn how to see things the way that the Course in Miracles teaches, which is what you would do if you're a Course in Miracles student, that's where all your learning is going to ultimately converge. So forgiveness is enough. Learning to forgive is enough. Learning how to see correctly is enough. Learning how to let go of everything that keeps you from being forgiving is enough. Okay, take a breath. Integrate, 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 integrate. <clears throat> 
Then it says, you may have noticed that the list of attributes of God's teachers do not include things that are the, teach the son of God's inheritance. Terms like love, sinlessness, perfection, knowledge, and eternal truth do not appear in this context. Terms like love, sinlessness, perfection, knowledge, and eternal truth do not appear in this context because they would be most inappropriate here. It is your inheritance to experience love. It is your inheritance to experience your sinlessness. It's your inheritance to experience your perfection. It's your inheritance to experience knowledge. It's your inheritance to experience eternal truth. But what the teacher's manual is, is, is teaching you how to uh, learn how to express the advanced characteristics of a teacher of God that's a demonstrator of love. The course says what God has given, what God has given is so far beyond our curriculum. What real love gives is so far beyond our curriculum that learning just disappears in the presence of what God is going to give you. What our Creator is going to give us is so far beyond anything that we could learn that what we learn just disappears in the presence of what God is going to give us. But while the presence, it says, yet while the presence of what God gives us is obscured, when, while we have not reached that point yet that we are letting ourselves experience all the blessings and the gifts that our Creator could give us, then the Course says the focus properly belongs on the curriculum. So where should our focus be? Our focus should be on the curriculum, right? And what is the curriculum? The curriculum is the Course in Miracles. And what is the aim of the Course in Miracles? To teach us how to forgive. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is love. Forgiveness is the correct perception. Forgiveness is true perception. The Course says forgiveness is release. That forgiveness is the miracle. So what is the function of God's teachers? What is the function of a teacher of love? He says, your function, because you are a teacher of God, I only teach teachers. The Course in Miracles is really only teaching teachers. So you really are a teacher of God. You're here to be a demonstrator of love. You're here to be a demonstrator of truth. The Course in Miracles says a teacher is a demonstrator. A teacher is a demonstrator. God is love. So you're here to be a what? <clears throat> demonstrator of love. You're here to be a demonstrator of truth. So it's your function as a demonstrator of truth to bring true learning to the world. That's the same as saying, I'm here to bring true perception to the world. The Course in Miracles says, perception is learning. You see things the way you learn to see things. You are seeing things the way you learned in the past to see things. And because of that, it means you're only seeing your past learning. Everything that you see, you learn to see it that way. However you see things, you learned to see things that way. So you're here to bring true learning to the world. Well, the Course says, properly speaking, it is unlearning that you're here to bring because unlearning the way that the world teaches would be true learning in the world unlearning the way a fearful mind sees things would be true learning in the world so what is our job what what's given us to do the course says it's given to the teachers of god to bring glad tidings of complete forgiveness to the world. What? It's your function to bring the glad tidings of complete forgiveness to the world. It's your function as a demonstrator of love to bring glad tidings of complete forgiveness, which is com the complete, the complete, the complete, the complete correct perception to the world. That sounds happy. Blessed indeed are the teachers of God. 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 For the teachers of God are the bringers of salvation. I say the teachers of God are the bringers of salvation. And do you know that the Course in Miracles defines salvation as right-mindedness?
darkness. So blessed indeed are the teachers of love, for they are the bringers of right-mindedness, which is forgiveness. That's what you're here for. So your focus belongs on the Course in Miracles. If you are a Course in Miracles student and you are experiencing any kind of pain or fear or upset or guilt or sickness or lack, then your focus belongs on the curriculum. Your focus belongs on the curriculum. Your focus belongs on the curriculum. Do you know? Do you know? It is your function to bring true learning to the world. It is your function to bring true learning to the world. It is your function to bring true learning to the world. It is your function to bring love to the world. Did you know that it is your function to bring this teaching of love to the world? Blessed indeed are you because you are the bringers of salvation. So, this is all about the ten attributes of the teacher of God, the teachers of God. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to review right quick what the 10 attributes of the teacher of God, what the attributes are. But I want you to breathe. I want you to breathe. So let's go back and take a look at the 10 attributes of the teachers of God. The, the first attribute of the teacher of God is trust. The Course says, trust is the foundation on which your ability to fulfill your function rests. And you see what I said earlier about perception is the result of learning. And I said perception is learning. You're seeing things the way that you learned. So when you become a true teacher of God, when you become a true teacher of love, you have trust in the world. He says you have trust in the world because you've learned that the world isn't governed by the laws that the world made up. That the, that, that the world is governed by a power that is in you, but this power is not of you. So there's a power in you, but not a power of you that keeps all things safe. And then the Course talked about how you develop the trust. It said, the Course says first you have to go through a period of unlearning, you go through a period of undoing, and that you have to remember that changes are always helpful. So right now I'm doing a quick review, so it'll be a little bit harder to just try to follow along. So I just want you to kind of pay attention to, to what I'm saying right now as I go back through this, because what I did was highlighted a lot of the main points that the Course in Miracles says. So what do you do? The first thing you want to do is tell yourself that changes are always helpful. So no matter what you're going through in your life right now, take a minute to tell yourself changes are always helpful. Changes are always helpful. Do you know that the Course says that once you've learned that changes are always helpful, that's when you go to the next stage. So how do you go to the next stage of acquiring the characteristics of a teacher of love? You start saying, I don't care what's going on right now. This change that I'm going through is helpful. Even if I don't feel like it's helpful, even if it doesn't look like it's helpful, the change that I'm going through is helpful. Everything, every event, every encounter, every circumstance in my life is helpful. It may not look like it sometimes, it may not feel like it sometimes, but everything that's happening in my life, every change that's going on in your life is helpful. Then it says the next thing you're going to go through is a period of relinquishment, which means that the once you really find out what's really valuable, you're going to let go of what's not valuable. So what does that mean? Whatever is helping you move toward love, move toward peace, move toward God, that's helpful. Anything that's moving you toward fear, anger, guilt, or grievances, the Course would say that is not helpful. It is not valuable. So the once you find out the thinking that you have, the things that would make you not forgive, 
and not have peace, then you have to let that go. And he says, when you let go of what's not valuable, which is what's not helping you, what's not moving you toward love and peace, the Course says where you would have anticipated grief, the truth is you will feel a happy, lightheartedness instead. That if you're really following the truth, where you thought something was being asked of you, you know what's going to happen? You're going to find out that you're going to have a gift bestowed on you. I'm just doing a review. So what do you do? Give up what you do not want and keep what you do want. That's what it says. You give up what you do not want and keep what you do want. What could be simpler than that? Give up what you don't want, keep what you do want. Ah, then he goes on to tell us in the development of the characteristics of a teacher of God that you reach a point where all your learning is consolidated and you start applying the truth to everything that's happening to you and then you will have a consistent way of thinking and then you will start to transfer what you're thinking to every situation and circumstance and relationship in your life. So how do you know when you're beginning to get this? You'll start using it, using it in every situation and, and in every relationship and in every circumstance. You will be using what the Course in Miracles teaches you. Then it says that the next characteristic of a teacher of God is honesty. And it tells us that trust is the first characteristic. The next characteristic is honesty. And honesty doesn't apply only to what you say. He says honesty means consistency. That means nothing that you think or do. There's not a thought you have that opposes any other thought. There's not any act that you do that belies your word. It, he says that when you're honest, there's no word you have that doesn't agree with every other word. And the next characteristic is tolerance. And it says the next characteristic, which is characteristic th three, is God's teachers do not judge. That tolerance comes from not judging. So if I'm going to be tolerant, I'm not going to judge. But if you are going to judge, you want to use the Holy Spirit's judgment. What is the Holy Spirit's judgment? The Holy Spirit's judgment is everything is either love or call for love. Everything is either love or call for love or call for help or call for healing. The fourth characteristic of a teacher of God is gentleness. The Course says that you must learn very early in your training that being harmful in any way is going to obliterate your function as a teacher of love from your, from your awareness. How can it be if you're kicking butt, arguing, and attacking that you are demonstrating love? So the Course in Miracles says when you get to the next characteristic, which is gentleness, you realize that harm and harmfulness will not help you achieve anything. So if you are no longer wanting to attack, then the Course in Miracles says you have the strength of gentleness. And someone that's truly gentle could never be attacked, could never be hurt. So remember that. That's how you can tell if you still have some attack thoughts. Do you still see attack? Do you believe you can be attacked? Then you haven't become completely gentle yet. But remember, these are attributes that we're learning how to achieve. The fifth characteristic of a teacher of God is joy. The Course in Miracles says that what causes joy is gentleness. And if you are gentle, it says your hands will always be filled. And the reason why you would be gentle is because you trust in God. And do you know that the Course says a person that trusts in God is a person that's sure that the Holy Spirit God's teacher is going before them, making sure that no harm can come to them. So when you're really beginning to get this, you will trust that the Holy Spirit is in charge so you could not be harmed because you are letting the voice for God, the voice for love, direct you in everything. And when you're letting, the God, when you're letting God and love be in charge, the Course in Miracles says joy will be your song of thanks. The next characteristic of a teacher of God is defenselessness. And the Course says uh, God's teacher, that's somebody that's learned how to be simple. 
They're not going to be defensive. I never, I never defend the Course in Miracles. The Course in Miracles says one of the characteristics of a demonstrator of love is that they are defenseless because they know that their joy and their safety comes from knowing that God created them. And since you know God has created you and you know that God is going before you and you're full of trust in God, there's no need for you to defend yourself. There's no need for you to come up with all the different plans that you think you need to make in order for you to be okay because you know you're going to be okay because you know that God is going before you, making straight your path. Now, you're going to receive a plan. So other people around you may think you're planning, but you'll be carrying out a plan. You won't be coming up with your own little plan separate from God. Do you know that the next characteristic, I'm doing the review, Characteristic seven is generosity. And generosity has a different meaning to a teacher of God than it does to the world. To a teacher of God, being generous means you're going to give away the thoughts that you want to keep. You're going to start giving away the perceptions and the thoughts that you want to keep. The Course in Miracles is talking about giving away the thoughts and ideas that you want to see grow, the thoughts and ideas that you want to keep. It says, as a teacher of God, you wouldn't want any thoughts that you couldn't give away because you know it's giving is the way that you receive. So you would be giving out of self-interest, but not out of ego interest because you know that if you want to see these ideas manifest, then you need to share these ideas because when you share these ideas, these ideas become stronger. So if I'm sharing this with you, I'm remembering this. And so when I share something, that's how I keep it and allow it to become stronger. The eighth characteristic of a teacher of God is patience. And the Course says patience comes from being certain of how everything is going to turn out. If God is in charge and God's will for us is perfect happiness, then no matter what we're going through, we know the end of the movie is that we're going to be in perfect happiness. And since we know how the movie is going to turn out, the Course in Miracles says we can wait and we can wait without anxiety. And patience comes from knowing how things are going to turn out. You may not know when it's going to happen, but you know what's going to happen. And so the Course in Miracles says patience is natural to someone who's trusting God. But if I'm not trusting God, I would be very impatient. The next characteristic of the teacher of God, which is faithfulness. And what is faithfulness? Faithfulness is you believing that you're going to apply. Faithfulness is you applying this truth that you are studying to every area of your life. Being faithful means that you trust that the course in miracles, the word of God, the truth is going to set all things right. You're, you're faithful because you're learning how to give every problem, every concern, you give it up, you've given it up to your higher power, God. That's how you know you have true faithfulness. Because you are going to accept God's definition of you and not what the world teaches you you are. And God's definition of you is that you are innocent, that you are spirit, that you are eternal. And so you take all your problems to God. And the Course in Miracles teaches you how to do that. And then that takes us to the last characteristic of the teacher of God, which is open-mindedness. And what did we hear? That an open-minded person is not a person that judges. An open-minded person is someone who is learning how to forgive, which, that mean, which means they're learning how to let go of everything that would prevent forgiveness. That they're not condemning, that they're not judging, and if they are going to judge, they're going to use the Holy Spirit's judgment. And because you are open-minded, you are willing to listen to the voice for God because you don't think that you know everything. You have an open mind. And how can you tell when you're truly forgiven? The Course says you abandon what the world thinks. Nothing is now the way it was before. Everything is shining and bright and welcoming. And there is no threat. And what is the final goal of the curriculum? Forgiveness. And what is forgiveness? True perception. It's not you trying to overlook what you think somebody did to you. 
That is not the Course in Miracles definition of forgiveness. Forgiveness is correct perception, true perception, releasing everything that would block you from having true perception. That is your goal. Your goal is to learn how to get, let go of anger, guilt, and grievances and the past from your perception. And the Course says that once you do that, then at that point, that's when you will go beyond all learning. And that's when you'll start to experience what God really and truly, love really and truly wants to give you, which is far beyond our curriculum. So, you are here to bring that true learning to the world. You're here to demonstrate what the Course is teaching. You are blessed. I'm blessed. Because we are the bringers of salvation. We are the bringers of right-mindedness. Wow. Just think, the next time we meet, we're going to talk about how is healing accomplished. Woo! That's going to be a good one. I'm Earl Purdy. I'm a full-time teacher of A Course in Miracles. If you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, I would certainly appreciate that. Just go to my website, www.earlpurdy.com. I'm going to do a quick little thing right here at the end in just a minute to kind of bring this all together. EarlPurdy.com. You can also use Venmo. And my email address is EarlPurdy at EarlPurdy.com. And I appreciate it if you would make comments or let me know what you really appreciate about what I do and how I do it. That would be great. Love to hear your comments about what you appreciate the most about how I share and how it comes through me. I'm also available for one-on-one -on -one sessions to get past, help you get past any blocks so that you can get to that, that love that you want, that peace that you want, that abundance that you want in your mind and spirit. Uh, I have been an astrologer and a numerologist, a sole purpose astrologer and numerologist for over 40 years. And I do sessions called Clarity Sessions. Go to my website. It is, explains those clarity sessions in detail. And you can book a session with me right there online. On Sundays at 1 p.m., I do the Course in Miracles here on Facebook Live on the Earl Purdy page at 1 p.m. in front of a live audience. But you can tune into it at home. And, of course, Thursdays here at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, we do hardcore Course in Miracles. And you are total blessings. That's what you are. That is what you are. Tell yourself, I'm a total blessing. That is what I am. Take a breath. Tell yourself, I'm going to let go of everything that prevents forgiveness. I'm willing to let go of everything that prevents forgiveness. I'm willing to let go of everything that prevents forgiveness. I'm willing to let go of everything that prevents forgiveness. Say it to yourself. I'm willing to let go of everything that prevents forgiveness. I'm willing to let go of everything that prevents forgiveness. I'm willing to let go of everything that prevents forgiveness. I'm willing to let go of everything that prevents forgiveness. I'm willing to let go of everything that prevents forgiveness. I'm willing to let go of everything that prevents forgiveness. I'm willing to let go of everything that prevents forgiveness. Say that to yourself. I'm willing to let go of everything that prevents forgiveness. I'm here to bring true learning to the world. I am here to bring true learning to the world. I'm here to bring true learning to the world. I am here to bring true learning to the world. I am here to bring true learning to the world. I am here to bring true learning to the world, which is the opposite of what the world teaches. I'm here to bring love to the world. I'm here to bring love to the world. I'm here to bring true learning to the world. I'm here to bring the glad tidings of complete forgiveness. I'm here to bring glad tidings of complete forgiveness. I'm here to bring the glad tidings of complete forgiveness to the world. I'm here to bring the glad tidings of correct perception to the world. I'm here to bring the glad tidings of complete correct perception to the world. I'm here to bring the glad tidings of complete, correct perception to the world. Say this, I am the bringer of right-mindedness. 
I am the bringer of right mindedness. I am the bringer of right mindedness. I am the bringer of right mindedness. You are the bringer of right mindedness. You are the bringer of right mindedness. Okay, mighty companions, we did it again. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. You just, ah, whoo, it's so good to be around some other teachers of God, demonstrators of love. You are, are off the chain. You are off the chain. Well, mighty companions, may the course be with you. Please share this video. Please share this video, and I'll see you next time. God bless you. Mwah. See you soon.